good day, everybody. Welcome back to the channel. You know, I've covered a lot of typewriter-related issues in the last few years on this channel, and I think a discussion of typewriters would be incomplete uh, without covering type bar electric machines. This is the Olympia Reporter. The uh, date of this typewriter is a bit uncertain. It's roughly from the early 1980s. It says on the back label it's made in Japan, and I believe it's made by Nakajima, who also made the uh, Olympia Report Electronic Daisy Wheel version, which I have also. Uh, this is probably the third uh, Type Bar Electric that I've owned. I have the blue uh, 5 Series uh, Type R Electric from the 1950s. I had the uh, 6 Series uh, Smith Corona Coronet Automatic 12 that just last week my middle brother was uh, hinting around that he wanted a typewriter and I decided, okay, you probably need an electric typewriter or electronic typewriter because you have arthritis in your hands and so we set up the Cornette Automatic 12 and I set up one of the Nakajima Daisy Wheel machines and he immediately took to the Type Bar Electric uh, Smith Corona which he now has so hey that makes room for this machine right? Well Olympia certainly have a great reputation for build quality but given that this is a Type Bar typewriter built in Japan in the early 1980s you do have to wonder what is the build quality like compared to earlier West German made manual typewriters. All right, so there's a power switch on the left side of the keyboard that also has a mechanical interlock to the carriage lock itself. So in the off position, the carriage will not move. And on position, even unplugged as it is now, the carriage now is permitted to move with the uh, carriage release lever. Power shift and shift lock, so this has power shifting, in other words the uh, motorized spindle underneath the keyboard does the shifting and it is a, a segment shift. Uh, power tab, so it has tabs and uh, it has a nice tab braking system so the carriage doesn't go flying very fast. Margin release of course, uh, standard American style keyboard, a modern electronic or electric typewriter layout of course the number one and exclamation mark but you also have your great uh, location for your apostrophe and the uh, quote mark over here on the right side like a modern keyboard would have. It does have plus and equals. Uh, it has a backspace key that is a power backspace repeatedly. Uh, it also has a mechanical half space feature. Uh, so you can mechanically drive the carriage a half a space at a time. A power space bar. And then these keys that are labeled in orange, the dash hyphen, the period, and the X will be repeated keys if you hold it down. It'll repeatedly type those keys for strikeouts and lines and whatnot. Uh, power shifting, of course, on the right side here. And the power carriage return. So yes, this is similar to the Coronet Automatic 12 Smith Corona with a power carriage return. And then you have a correct button. So this typewriter was kind of built to use those two colored cloth ribbons that have the white correction strip on the bottom and this physically will lift up the ribbon vibrator to the lower side which would be the correction strip if you're using that style but it does not advance the carriage when you do so. And then finally the bichrome setting is interesting so the middle position is the top of the ribbon or black and then the bottom setting is either the red or white correction which is why it's colored this way and then the top position here is your stencil position where it doesn't use the ribbon at all. Okay the left side of the carriage you have your platen knob and there is a push button to disengage the line spacing clutch. A paper bale has these plastic rollers, two plastic rollers that slide and the paper bale has a scale on it. Then your line spacing selector here has an R which is continuous adjustable for uh, temporarily disengaging the line spacing uh, clutch and then you have one one and a half and two line spacing. 
Now, one of the questions about the quality of this machine that would be evident is what about any of the plastic parts and how rugged are they? Well, you might notice here that there is a plastic paper guide here. Um, most manual typewriters prior to this would have a, a metal paper guide, but evidently it's still working and it's not broken, so that's good. It has the traditional push and slide margin settings, very straightforward with a nice bright dot indicator on both of those. And uh, it has a fairly hard platen, but it seems to be okay. It's a 12 inch wide platen. So it's very similar to the Coronet Automatic 12 Smith Corona in terms of its width, right? So looking at the back of the machine from the right side, you have your right uh, carriage adjustment here. And then you have a paper support finger that folds up like that. Very straightforward, very similar to other Olympias of this era. Uh, paper bail right here. You have your paper release lever that releases the pressure rollers underneath the platen. There is only one carriage release button. It's on the right side, which might seem odd considering this is a full-size carriage machine, but the real reason why that is, I think, is because it has a power carriage return. And of course, the platen knob itself. Okay, underneath the ribbon cover, you have two clear card guides with holes for putting a pen or pencil in and drawing lines on your paper. And there are some engraved lines here in the card guides for the bottom of your printing line. And they are fairly accurate, and they actually have little tick marks for every five characters, which is pretty good. One of the other aspects of this typewriter in terms of plastic design are the auto-reversing levers. The forked guides are now plastic instead of metal. And also a lot of the little intricate parts underneath the ribbon spools for doing the ribbon drive are all plastic. And I thought about that and I watched this thing operate and used it. And actually, I don't think that's a problem. I think, in fact, some of these plastic parts have less coefficient of friction sliding one upon the other than metal parts would. They're lighter in weight. They sort of self-lubricate themselves. So given the age of this machine is the early 80s and it looks like it's never been serviced, uh, it is pretty reliable. It actually does really well with um, the uh, ribbon advance and ribbon reversing. Uh, so it does use these DIN size spools and it has these two little forked plastic posts that raise up and support the ribbon. But you know, surprisingly, this one isn't broken. And I've seen other brands of typewriters that have these little plastic posts that do uh, end up breaking. But this one, surprisingly, is in pretty good shape. Maybe it has something to do with the quality of the materials used. Uh, so here's your segment right here, your type bars. It uses a rubberized little tube for the type bar rest. Standard kind of type bar typewriter layout right there. Well, the power tab button is over here on the left side. Your tab set and clear buttons are here on the right side. This lever goes this way or that way to set or clear the tabs. And you can clear all the tabs by pressing and holding the clear button while you rack the uh, carriage back and forth the entire range of its motion. Well, it's an electric typewriter, so uh, the inevitable is going to have to happen. We're going to have to plug this guy in. Okay, the motor comes to life. So if there's any condition issue at all in this machine that's of concern, it is one thing, and that is the drive belt on the left side here. It is a toothed V-shaped silicon rubber belt that is very loose. It's stretched out over the years, and as such, it will type okay, and it types quite nicely, in fact. But the carriage return, you have to help it it's just slipping and that's just the way it is so that is one of the condition issues with this typewriter i'm going to have to find a replacement belt for it but in the meantime let's give it a test here
This typewriter makes a very nice imprint. The letter alignment is really good and you can really fly on this thing. In fact, you can type so fast that it's easy to make mistakes if you're not careful. And that brings up one of the problems with this typewriter, of course, is that I'm not using the white correction type ribbon because they, they just clog up the entire workings of the machine with white dust and powder. But uh, you'll have to use correction tabs or correction tape. So you have to be a little bit more careful with this machine in typing because it is so fast. It's so easy to throw down letters. So the powered backspace key, you can hold it down and the carriage drives back. The powered tab key, it has a really nice tab brake system. The powered shift and shift lock. Well, there's that little nuisance uh, drive belt. Down there you can see the brass pulley on the motor shaft and it's a toothed V-belt. You might be able to see the V's and then it drives this spindle pulley over here. So the right side of the spindle over here on the right, uh, it has this plastic gear set and wrapped around the plastic gear is a drawstring and this drawstring serves as the carriage return system. That pulls the carriage back. This Olympia Type Bar Electric has all the familiarity of a Type Bar machine. So it's very familiar in that regards, but the real difference in the typing experience between this and a fully manual machine is the touch. Here you don't have to worry about finger pressure, getting the right kind of force or velocity on the keys. With this machine, you barely move your finger and it types. So it's a very soft feel. It's very much like a computer in a sense. If you've never uh, used an electric type R machine before, it's very computer-like. And so because it's so fast, but it doesn't have the instant correction ability of a computer or word processor, you have to be very careful about not making mistakes. I think even more so than a manual machine because you can type so fast and usually if you're like me, if you get up toward the upper end of your typing speed ability, your error rate goes up. So I find what helps me in using this machine is to just slow down a little bit and be a little bit more pedantic about making sure the words are spelled properly so you don't make typographical errors and you actually pick up speed when you do that because you don't have to stop to correct. But this machine can really fly and it is a very practical writing tool. So this is an electric type R machine. It has a carrying case that's rather ergonomic considering how big and heavy these machines can be, but it's luggable, certainly. Uh, you could carry it out to some public place and plug it in like you would if you had a laptop computer and needed to recharge it, but it wouldn't really be ideal. So most people are gonna probably use this kind of a machine in their office at home, wherever their writing station is. And that brings to mind an interesting thought, which is, does this supplant the standard upright machines? The large, heavy, bulky manual machines that didn't have cases, so they're not easy to store, and so you have to pretty much keep them on your desk or keep them on wherever you write at. This kind of might supplant one of those older machines because it does the work of a real professional writer's typewriter better than even a older machine because it's much faster. It flies. It has the added benefit though is you can put it in its case and you can store it in your closet, which you can't do with a full-size upright standard machine. It obviously has that 1980s plastic typewriter aesthetic, very similar to the uh, Report electronic daisy wheel version, but uh, it's a practical machine. In fact, I've seen uh, some article about some press reporter back in the 70s and 80s that spent his career typing on Olympia type bar electric machines and he would he swore that was the only machine he would use so these do have their uh, adherence and their fans and uh, I can see it does have some elements of its build quality that reminds me of the classic Olympia manual machines even though this is built by Nakajima in Japan pretty good build quality otherwise. So I'm pretty impressed. Again, the design problem is really the drive belt. My drive belt in this machine isn't broken, it's just slack. So this machine came with several new old stock 
correcting ribbons. These are the ribbons with black ink on top and the white correction strip on the bottom. And it's interesting, it's a kind of an old style box. Whoever used this machine in the past had certainly used these correcting ribbons because the entire insides of the machine was gunked up with that white film that comes from these correcting ribbons. If you have to do corrections on your typewriter, I recommend getting some of these correct type strips. That's, that's my favorite, especially for colored paper, off-white paper. Otherwise, with white paper, you can use the correction tape rolls, which are quite handy also. So the half space feature is a convenient way to insert missing letters in an already typed line. So for instance, if we type uh, test, 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 but oh no, I forgot to put a letter, an extra letter in uh, this, the middle word here. What I can do is erase the word test like that. And then I can backspace to the letter T. I'm going to make a space, single space, press the half space down, type a T, release it, press the half space, type the E, release it, press the half space, type the S, release it, press the half space, type the T. And now I've inserted the missing letter in this word by borrowing a half space from the space before and after the word. So I was thinking back on my typewriter history, and I go all the way back to the early 1970s when my father bought us three kids uh, a family typewriter, and it was a Hermes Model 10 electric type bar machine. And I use that machine a lot. In fact, my brother, my oldest brother, still has it, but it's on loan to somebody in town here, and I'm really wanting to get that machine back so I can do a review of it. But I also took typing class in the early 70s in high school with electric type bar machines. I can see why type bar electric machines, especially of this vintage, aren't really appealing to the typewriter collecting person. In the typewriter world, I see typewriter collectors and typewriter users. This vintage of Type R electric machine is really not well suited for the typewriter collector. This is a machine for the typewriter user, for the writer who wants non-distractive, fast quality writing. If you're interested in acquiring an electric Type R machine, it's probably a good time to do so because these are undervalued on the uh, used auction sites. This machine, I think it, we got it off of a Shop Goodwill, it was pretty reasonably priced. People just don't look at these machines. They're looking for the classic manual machines. But it has a Olympia build quality with some Japanese build quality, the tail end of the Olympia era. It's a fast, responsive writing tool. I think these are the unsung heroes of the typewriter world. They're underappreciated. They came at the very tail end of the type bar typewriter era, so they really represent the evolutionary end of type bar machines. And they incorporate the best of uh, manual machine features along with the advantages of electrification and fast typing, blistering blazingly fast. Machines like this were built for, as the name suggests, the reporter, built for writers who weren't yet ready for the word processor or the computer or just preferred the non-distractive writing of a typewriter. And so I think there's a lot to be said for these as pragmatic, practical writing tools. You may not like the look of it in your typewriter collection, in your antique typewriter china cabinet display case, but this is a machine you could certainly get along well with in terms of putting words on paper, and that's really what it ultimately comes down to. I'd like to hear what you guys have to say about type bar electric machines. Have you tried them? Do you have a secret fondness for them that you haven't really admitted to other people, or do they just not excite you? Whatever the case, leave a comment down below. I'd love to have a dialogue with you. Let's have a conversation about type bar electric machines. Well, in any event, you guys, I hope you'll stay safe, stay well, stay healthy, stay creative, and have yourselves a great day. Bye-bye for now.